So they had this long fascination with the horse. They loved the horse. The people that rode horses in the cavalry ended up with a bunch of you know prestigious positions and high-ranking positions. And they saw the tank not as like, hey, this is what's going to take over the horse. It's trying to, 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 it's junior to the horse. It's not as good as the horse. Nor is it surprising that the desire of the war office to placate the cavalry was stronger than logic. Not only did they veto any expansion of the tank corps, but under the direction of Montgomery, ruled that the new tank brigade should never be reassembled, and this in the mid-1930s with Hitler arming to the teeth. That's you can't you you just you have to have a, you have to be a, kind of like a, a psychopath to do there's that. Ins- it, there's a level of insanity in there. It's like how how do you look at a horse in a tank <laughs> and look at him and go well yeah and, you know I was thinking like the bolt action rifle or the automatic machine gun hey fire that one I, I think cool. we're fire. actually talking uh, sword versus yeah. automatic machine gun I, I'm just trying a to come horse up against the like, tank yeah you like, gotta go for you gotta go harder bro yeah it's a fair <laughs> point it, it just the, the depths of craziness and look at that and and Carrie was talking about this after the last podcast K dog was talking about this was the culture of the of the um, the cavalry mm-hmm. and you just said in there uh, what was it a thousand years yeah. People will be using horses yeah. in combat like there's a culture inside there that's going to be kind of hard to break into. The tank? <laughs> Come on, man. And, and, and it's, it evokes kind of the same frustration that I t- articulated in the very first podcast about the machine gun. No, it was before then. Mm-hmm. And when I talked about the machine gun, of how, how long does it take for me to watch a machine gun mow down some of my guys where I go, time out, mm-hmm. stop, stop. stop. I got this one wrong. We need to come up with another plan as opposed to like, no, just keep sending them in. And do that for four years. For four years. At the risk of literally, I mean, millions of people, but but the horse and the tank, and even like old pictures of the war. The, the crazy thing about World War One tanks, so like the previous era of tanks that they'd be leveraging from, they're these giant massive things. They're like almost like comedically <laughs> too big. Yeah. But you, if you were to just put those two side by side, like you said, there's a level of psychopathy, a level of 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 crazy. You got to go. No, the horse. Yeah, give me the horse. Give and me the, the horse. sword, dude. There was a little bit of, maybe even a little bit more than a little. Um, when when we started using night vision, you've night vision about. goggles. Yeah, dude, I've you've talked, talked about, about that, man. We we had guys that were like, oh, we we'd be wearing night vision on patrol and guys, but we shouldn't wear night vision. Like what? what? Are you insane? It, it lets you see in the dark. Yeah, you get to fight an enemy that's blind to you. Yeah. Well, I've said this, and I've, I mean, in in air, in aviation, I got to fly stealth airplanes, like very modern stealth airplanes. And to this day, despite the insane <laughs> advantage, the insane advantage, there is still an ongoing debate over as to whether or not we should have non stealth. This is not. This is a, like in fighters. There's reasons to have non like cargo planes and attack planes. Like, but in this world of like airplane fighting against another airplane or using airplanes to get into a contested space, there's still an ongoing debate of, hey, we should just retrofit like really nice legacy airplanes with cool, cool missiles and cool engines and stuff like that. I'm like, I, my airplane is invisible. Mm-hmm. <laughs> my airplane is invisible. You will not see it. Yeah, it doesn't is... matter how fast you can go or how much gas you can carry or how cool your weapon is. You're going to lose. How much longer till pilots are not doing this job? Fighter pilots. I think we are one generation away. My opinion is that the next generation, which what's scary is like it's much sooner. It's not like 40 years from now. The, the next generation of airplanes is going to come out in the next 15, 20 years. And they're going to be no pilots. No, no. I, I think this gen, like they're building this now. They're designing and building it now. Really? So the, yeah. And so technology, one of the drawbacks of, of airplanes, like from conception to development and building, it takes a long time. Mm-hmm. So this plane has been on the drawing board for 10 years. Mm-hmm. And, and this is what happens when you got the military industrial complex, because yeah. if we gave this to Elon Musk, he'd Dude, be like, oh, got right your fighter here. pilot, yeah. it's electric. And, and <laughs> to his dismay, he probably wants and thinks and understands that we should be a generation ahead. But be that as it may, even with that, I think we've got one more airplane in us with a person inside. Mm-hmm. That's my opinion. and. You know, even with that, it is met with so much resistance, so much institutional resistance. Yeah, that's which is crazy, right? 
because you take the pilot out of the plane. And, and, and the, the other thing is you, can, you don't have to fight a plane with a plane. You can fight a plane with 19 unmanned drones that, have, that cost a fraction of the price and can yeah. maneuver and don't have to worry about the stupid human in there screwing things up. And that's why that story of the naval officer going, you should buy all these tanks. <laughs> because he's got no, yeah. he has no personal vested interest in the tank. He's not inside that whole thing. He's not a cavalry guy riding horses. He's like, I'm over here in a boat. I'm just telling you from my vantage point, <laughs> it's not even close. Buy this thing. Buy them all right now. Because he's detached. He's, detached. <laughs> he's just like, oh, no, I'm not. This is not for my personal gain. Yeah. I'm not going to be in that tanker on that horse. I'm just telling you from, from over here, it's not, it's not even close. Just do this. Because he sees it from a perspective. And that's what I think, that's where the, that is, it, the, the level of frustration of hearing this is really hard. Because, hey, you're, there. I said bolt action rifle and machine gun. You're know, like, go harder, dude. <laughs> yeah. Go harder. Sword, you know, which is like a slingshot <laughs> and a heavy machine gun, automatic heavy machine gun. It, th- that's how big the gap is. And the only way to not see the machine gun is to be so invested and so committed to your point yeah. of view that, just like we said last time, you will dismiss the truth because it doesn't align with your preconceived outcome that you've, you've created in your head, which is probably, to some degree, the definition of being a psychotic, a psychopath. <laughs> 